The Quest for the Historical Jesus In one of the comments on my videos, one viewer quoted Thomas Jefferson from a letter that he wrote to William Baldwin in 1810. In that letter, Jefferson writes, But a short time elapsed after the death of the great reformer of the Jewish religion before his principles were departed from by those who professed to be his special servants and perverted into an engine for enslaving mankind and aggrandizing their oppressors in church and state. Thomas Jefferson tried to distill what he regarded as the original ethical teachings of Jesus from the Gospels. This was the real Jesus, the real teaching of Jesus. Jesus as he was before the theologians such as Paul and the Gospel writers got hold of him and turned him into some kind of divine or semi-divine figure. In around 1820, Jefferson cut and pasted verses from the New Testament to create a work entitled The Life and Morals of Jesus of Nazareth, extracted textually from the Gospels in Greek, Latin, French and English. This belief that there was an historical Jesus who predated the Gospel messages about him, which were corrupted with all these miraculous elements and which sought to elevate Jesus above the human into the supernatural realm, became widespread in the 19th century, triggering the quest for the historical Jesus. And this resulted in a proliferation of books on the life of Jesus, many of them called The Life of Jesus. The scholars producing these works sought to apply newly acquired historical methods and methods of textual criticism to extract mostly from the Gospels this true Jesus. By the end of the 19th century, hundreds of lives of Jesus had been produced. Now these weren't, well at least they weren't intended to be devotional books. They were attempting to be genuinely academic. Suffice it to say that they tended to overstep the boundaries somewhat. They were usually hundreds and hundreds of pages long. I attempted to read, or at least selectively scan, some of these biographies via their index when I was doing my PhD. For my doctorate I was examining the theological doctrine that states that Jesus was without sin. I wanted to see what some of these 19th century writers had to say on the subject. Somehow they were always able to extract an enormous quantity of gold from such a small sample of river gravel. They were, of course, simply inventing most of it. These biographies were very fanciful, highly romanticised accounts of Jesus' life. Basically, most of what they dug up, they had put there themselves in the first place. In 1906, Albert Schweitzer published The Quest of the Historical Jesus, in which he criticises liberal romantic efforts, effectively bringing this quest to an end, at least for a time. He wrote, The Jesus of Nazareth, who came forward publicly as the Messiah, who preached the ethic of the kingdom of God, who founded the kingdom of heaven upon earth and died to give his work its final consecration, never existed. Here's a figure designed by rationalism, endowed with life by liberalism, and clothed by modern theology in an historical garb. This image has not been destroyed from outside, it has fallen to pieces. Schweitzer claimed that Jesus was a Jewish apocalyptic preacher who expected the imminent end of the world, a view which I think still holds up pretty well today. Subsequent to the publication of Schweitzer's book, it became generally accepted that the historical Jesus was unrecoverable, but that this wasn't important. It was Christ who was important, the risen Lord, rather than this historical figure. The German theologian and biblical scholar Rudolf Bultmann wrote, I do indeed think that we can now know almost nothing concerning the life and personality of Jesus, since the early Christian sources show no interest in either, are moreover fragmentary and often legendary. And other sources about Jesus do not exist. And again, 
What matters is not that Jesus was such and such a person, but that God has acted through his cross and has acted through the proclamation of the cross, raising him up as the one now living, the Christ. Another German theologian, Paul Tillich, wrote, The problem is not to describe in detail what Jesus was or what he said and did, but to understand what it means to call him the Christ. In this sense, he is the new being who has appeared in human history. And again, it is not the historical Jesus upon whom the church is founded, but the manifestation of the new being in Jesus as the Christ. Christ is not a figure of the past. He is a living reality and he is experienced as present. It was once reported that when someone presented Paul Tillich with evidence for the existence of Jesus, he is reported as saying, you mean he existed? This is, of course, an apocryphal story, but it makes the point that for many of these mid-20th century theologians, the historical details of Jesus' life, his historical personality, were not important. What was important was the theological interpretation of Jesus as the risen Lord, the Christ. I suppose theologians were forced into this position if it was actually impossible to uncover, recapture this historical figure. They made a virtue out of necessity. During the mid-1950s, this wave of scepticism about the historical Jesus began to recede somewhat, as is wont to happen. And so you begin to find books such as Gunter Bornkam's 1956 book, Jesus of Nazareth. Although, of course, most biblical scholars continued to recognise the Gospels as theological interpretations of the historical figure rather than as biographies, as we would understand that, they were somewhat more optimistic about the possibility of using critical methods to unearth some reliable historical information. And this quest for the historical Jesus continues to come and go in waves. One problem, I suppose, with all of these various quests is that they're all undertaken, almost all of them anyway, by Christian scholars examining the Gospels. They are therefore all predisposed to find something important and valuable there. They're not exactly objective historical research. Of course, this is really true of all history. Everyone approaches historical events with their own agenda, their own presuppositions, which is why the examination of history is never finished. There are some studies of the historical Jesus written by non-believers, of course, but you have to be equally wary of these if, for instance, they're predisposed to disprove the historicity of Jesus or to prove that he wasn't who or what the Gospels claimed him to be. I'm not among those who think that Jesus is an entirely mythological figure, completely made up by the Gospel writers or by Paul or whoever. Books that claim that always have a certain conspiratorial feel to me, like those books that claim that Shakespeare didn't write the plays that are attributed to him. Once a Christian, first an Episcopalian and then Evangelical, Bart Ehrman is now an agnostic atheist, and he is still, as he was when he was a Christian, a biblical scholar. And I would recommend his work, Did Jesus Exist? The Historical Argument for Jesus of Nazareth. I would recommend this as a fairly balanced account for anyone interested in pursuing this question further. He also doesn't accept the entirely mythological interpretation of Jesus. No doubt the debate on this and related issues will continue.